Welcome to another episode of Trash Talk Podcast. I'm hyped for this. How are you doing, Daisy? I'm doing fine. Pretty good. Okay, so what do we got, man? We're talking about music again. Well, yeah, so you want to pick out musical artists and then, yeah. like, talk about which songs we like the best and which ones we've known first, I believe. Correct. So, the main idea is what I wanted to do is how good do you basically know your musical taste. So, I'm gonna, or we just gonna name a band, musical artist, whatever, and then just from the top of our head, without looking at the folder first, uh, pick our favorite song from that band. Yes. So, Student from the Hip, um, nothing is guaranteed, just uh, spitting it out there. And then we're going to open the folder and then evaluate a bit more closely. So you got the folder pulled up on your computer. This almost sounds like something that would have a visual component to it, but it doesn't. <laughs> it does not. It's all it's just this nice background of the Golden Gate Bridge, which I... Which arguably uh, looks better than yeah. if there was going to be a folder. Yeah, which I created this whole picture by myself, by the way. Way which back means when. you use a, pick of, a piece of stock footage, put a thing on the side, and then that may be, put some that, letters that, on it. That may be a fact. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, let's get into it. So, who are we going with first, man? Got uh, an idea? I mean, kind of the obvious one would be Bon Jovi, but that's also we've, tough we've done that a lot already, before. A lot we've already done already, that. We've yeah. done them a lot. Uh, first one, what, what I'm what I'm seeing on the uh, screen right now, man, Alan Jackson. Talk some Alan Jackson, Dude. man. Dude, yeah, talk some Alan Jackson. That keeping guy it, keeping it country. That guy falls under the category of. Artists that I only have on there because you've given me a bunch of songs by yeah. him at one point and they're tolerable. <laughs> yeah, give me some country, man. Where are we going? Alan Jackson? Dude. Best song. Or favorite song, better yet. I, I, it, it, it's not that easy. I'm, uh, right now I'm just gonna call out uh, Small Town Southern Man. That's my, that's just my call. The thing is, there's not, none that I would. It's tough to pick a favorite when you're not really that into it in the first place, right? Well, you can still pick a favorite. And on top of that, like, God, that that falls under category of also, like, I can't even think of most of his songs. Also, like, there's a blur between, like, a few old different artists that are... There's not that many in there, I assume. It's probably, like, three or four only. Yeah. Go look it up. Let's see. Five of them. So five. Okay. Uh... Chattahoochee, Country Boy, Harder Than a Hammer, Lil Bitty, and Small Town Southern Man, as I said. Uh, you know what Harder Than a, a Hammer might also be uh, in contention? But I think my, my pick wasn't all that bad. See, I, I, I still can. Still can't pick one? Pick one. No, wow. They, they're all similar. All mediocre? Yeah. Really? All right, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. Uh, kind of. Okay. Here's one. All right, what we got? Billy Joel. I was going to bring up Billy Joel. It's not necessarily that tough to think of the songs, but it's just tough to make a pick, right? Uh, and It's not that tough to make a pick for me anymore, man. It's Leningrad. It's okay. pretty obviously Leningrad. Uh, I, pretty, listen, man, Billy Joel is, is rising, man. Climbing up them charts. For real. I'm gonna... Probably go with We Didn't Start the Fire. Uh, definitely probably the most recognizable one. That that I will give you. But, uh, yeah, I'm... I'm uh, I know Leningrad isn't even in your folder probably yes. yet. Because you didn't download it yet. But, um, yeah, yeah, that's... It's, it's I think Piano Man's different. also in contention, but besides that... Um, actually, it, number two just might be Honesty, which you also don't have in there yet. Gotta, gotta download that too. You gotta update your shit. I only got four songs in there. Yes, I only currently have four songs yeah. in there. Uh, so that, yeah, Leningrad is number one by um, Good Mile. I mean, I would disagree, but that's... You, have, you haven't even downloaded it yet. So? So, like... Do how, I necessarily have to download... How often have you really listened to that song? Like, a few you, times. Primarily when you played it, but I've also listened to it on my so own So you think before. We Didn't Start the Fire is better? Yes. I disagree. As a matter of fact, I would say that all of the uh, mentioned as well as songs in that folder are probably better. No than... way. Open that folder again. That's not a fact. Uh, Uptown Girl? Are you no, kidding me? That, that, okay, I might give you Uptown Girl, but... Even oh, you gotta give me the longest time, too. Piano Man, I get that it's a really, really good song. And I undervalue it... Uh, 
Oh, maybe a little bit. It's 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 real. It's one of the better Billy Joel songs. Well, of course it is. But yeah, come on. I mean, Leningrad is really good. Right? Man, PSA to everyone. Man, Leningrad by Billy Joel. Fantastic <laughs> song. Also, crazy good song. Possibly top twenty-five. If song. you want to make fun of him, just take the sound, but of him saying that he finds Leningrad good. Oh, I love Leningrad. Huge fan of Leningrad. And I'm a huge. I'm a, I'm a Leningrad type of person. There you go. There you don't even need to cut it now. Leningrad is awesome. Uh, great. So yeah, I, I said the same thing about yeah. genocide. So oh yeah, fair. exactly. Yeah. Uh, t- possibly top twenty-five song, man. When when it's all said and done, quite possible. Um, they might be giants. What up? Um, best song is definitely favorite song or best song? favorite song definitely uh, out of the ones I know is Rob Movie to Berlin probably yeah it's it's a really really good song it's arguably, arguably also my favorite song yeah. their only song that would actually qualify as a good song some of the other ones really? are like kind of fun and stuff but like musically they're not really uh, like Particle Man and Istanbul yeah yeah uh, probably Road Movie to Berlin, you are correct. Yeah, no, no. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good song or... It's definitely, uh, at the, uh, higher tier of good. Scrapping on the, on the grade. On the grade verse. So, um, you don't even have Istanbul in there. That's also, I do not that's have also a fact. Uh, yeah, I Rob do not Mo- like that song. I know you don't. It's, it's a weird thing you don't like that song. You got Particle, man, but you ain't got Istanbul. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know why I have Particle Man. Because it's, it's the funniest song in the history of music. And it's iconic, too. It's probably the most... It's, it's their, their most iconic song. For sure. Like, there's cartoons of it No. Okay, I'm thinking, trying to think of what else is there. Because I'm, I'm thinking of something like Green Day or Metallica. We've talked about mm-hmm. those before as well. Mm, yeah, not, maybe not Green Day that much. Okay. Let's, we can do Green Day. Let's do, let's do Green Day. Yeah, so what do you, what do we have, man? What What's your favorite song? What do you call it? Oh, God. It's tough, it's right? not even that easy. Yeah, because, I'm, I'm just gonna, because this is how it works, right? I'm just going to give a shout and say Boulevard of Broken Day. That's a good one. Uh, let me say, wake me up when September ends. Okay, but yeah, also pretty good. One. That's but the thing. Also, is like they have quite the range. Yeah, there's a stuff. bunch because of songs too. You've got. You only got four songs in there. Not a, there's, yeah, I, 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 I'm kind mm-hmm. of behind on downloading yeah, music. Yeah, we've established that. Um, currently in there, I've got American Idiot, Basket Case, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Wake Not a fan of Basket Case at all. Not a good song. And you get to the point where there is, uh, like. Almost two types of Green Day songs, like the more like punk rock esque stuff, uh, yeah. where you got like American Idiot, Basket Case, mm-hmm. um, and then you know the more like softer stuff, yeah. like which are a lot, are m- a lot of better in my opinion. I favorite that in my tends own. to be the case. Yeah. So yeah, I think my pick was all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are the top two songs in there. I was about to say like certain. I mean, if the, if you think about that for like half an hour, the, those could probably go either way. Yeah, I can. You know, I want to pull up my playlist as well. Uh, see if there's any additions yeah. we can. Uh, um, there's definitely one. What was it called? Uh, I'll tell you that right away. There's um. Oh love, is there one? Like that? Uh, oh love, yes, that 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 is one. It's yeah. okay. It's good enough. It's probably not one, but uh, I'm yeah, cool. but, but I'm saying it's not in yeah. here and yeah. Sure, I ain't got nothing to add. That's cool. Coldplay, man. What's up with Coldplay? Uh, oh, God. I'm, Coldplay is really, really tough. I'm just gonna... Again, I'm just gonna go mm-hmm. off the guts and say X and Y. X and Y? Yeah. Really? No. It's not even in, in the consideration. That's not even in my playlist. Uh, nah, nah. I can't agree with that. Um, Most recognizable is Paradise. Obviously. Probably, yeah. I like... All Viva La Vida. Which I also like a lot. Those two are arguably the most recognizable ones. Yeah. Um, damn. Kobe's tough. Kobe's might be the toughest one. Um, I like Viva La Vida. I really do. See what we got. So, we got Charlie Brown, Paradise, yeah. Up and Up, Viva mm. La Vida, X and Y, and Yellow. Yellow? I don't even know. Like, I legit don't know. What's it, what's it, what's it about... I, I only got four songs. Out. I only got four songs. In you got only got four. Uh, 
so exactly the, the final the last two in your folder I don't have because yes X and Y not that great the yellow don't even know it uh, of those four the thing is they're all really really close like they're all good there's no really like awful song in there uh, I might I'm I don't say up and up is the worst out of those four yeah probably that 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 is probably true I I still might pick uh, Viva La Vida Charlie Brown Paradise they're all up there they're all in s- somewhat of a a uh, similar uh, level, I would assume. So give me uh, one thing that I wanted to hear from you, man, Michael Jackson. Because you've always been about, oh, Beat It Isn't my, my favorite Michael Jackson song. Then what is it? Like, what is it? Probably ends up being uh, Billy Jean. Billy Jean? Okay. I mean, I can respect that, at least because I know it's a, it's a good Michael Jackson song. Uh, I mean, Thriller isn't bad either. But yeah. it's probably Billy Jean. Uh well, it's 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 beat it is the fact, but Billie Jean, I can I can understand, so that's cool. You got something else? No. Some other idea? No. Nothing. I, I also need to open the folder because I know that beat it's currently the only song. No, no, no you, I'm talking about other bands. Other bands? Oh, yeah. I thought you meant other Michael no, Jackson no, 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 songs. No, 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 no. Because there is a lot of I other know Michael Jackson lot songs, but of good ones too. But um, uh, how many other bands that we could? Uh, or you wanted to? You might want to know. Brian Adams. Brian Adams, that's... I don't like Brian Adams that much. <laughs> As a fact for the week. Not my fact of the week. Uh, not a fan of Brian Adams. Not a huge fan of Brian Adams, man. I mean, Summer of 69 would be the obvious one. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of that song, man. But Heaven also is pretty good. I'm, I'm not even sure, man. Just check it. What? It was on the screen right at... Yeah, and now you changed it again. So, yeah. Uh... Damn, man! I don't. I'm. I'm not a huge fan of any of these songs. To be honest, it's kind of. It's probably kind of the um, the Alan Jackson thing for for you, right? Maybe it's my Brian yeah. Adams. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Th- that's weird, right? Because he's one of those um, big, like big figures in the music yes. in the music industry, like one of the bigger figures. Um, I mean, and people love him. I o- I only have three songs by him too. Yeah. Which I have isn't one. that much, but I, I likely have one. Which would be Summer sixty nine. Fair. Likely. Uh haven't listened to it in years. So Blue Oyster Cold. Yeah, that, that also just mm-hmm. I was like, that seems like an obvious one. Um yeah, that, that's a, also a rather good one. God. Cause there's a lot of good stuff. This is more of a Coldplay type of situation where you have uh the quality definitely there, like split up over like five songs. That could contend. They're, they're also all kind of similar in quality, I feel. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's this maybe two or three that I'm, are a bit higher. I'm tempted to say Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford? Wow. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Reaper. I mean, that's definitely... Uh, I'm gonna look at my, uh, my photo real quick, but... I've got five in there right now. Alright, let's see, um... We've got Don't Feel the Reaper, Godzilla, John Crawford, Nosferatu, and Soul I got Survivor. six. I got uh, Celestial the Queen in addition to that. But yes. all the other ones are the same. Yeah, uh, the Reaper the Reaper is number one for me, I guess. Uh, original one, well, no longer with Soul Survivor. But uh, I, I, yeah, I, li- I like John Crawford. It's okay. Probably the weakest is Nosferatu. I, I argue not for audio. Probably, maybe Godzilla. I don't know. Yeah, Godzilla's all right, but um, yeah, give me the Reaper. I but it's it's Reaper. definitely like, if I'm picking out of those five, I'm picking the best one. Is definitely either don't for the Reaper, John Crawford, yeah. or Soul Survivor. Yeah, yeah, sure. Probably John Crawford. Those are those were the three that I was talking about. John Crawford maybe may not be the one for me actually. I'd probably pick between the other two, but give me the Reaper. I mean, fair enough. It's a it's a good band. That's that's a that's the sign of a good band. If you can't decide immediately, that means there's at least uh, several good songs. Either that or there is none. Well, yeah, but then you wouldn't typically consider it uh, that yeah. much, even even debating it. Huh, Darius Rucker. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's one song. It, it's Wagon Wheel. It's, it, oh, It'll it always is, be it, Wagon it, Wheel. It will never not be Wagon Wheel. That is an <laughs> absolute fact. Oh, God. John Denver? Mr. Denver? Obvious pick is Country Roads, but that's yeah because it's obvious. It's tough with this guy. 
kind of tough. I mean, I just I like might Country stick Roads. to it because it's I, yeah, I might it's, it's one of those sing along songs. Exactly, it's 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 by far the most popular. It's one of the biggest songs in history, so it's a really good song. I like it. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, I like "Thank God I'm a Country Boy." Yes, I I do like the song. I can't. I mean, I like them all, but it, it was. I was about to say there's, there's oh, none we, here that I see right now that. Uh, I really, worst one of those four is leaving on the airplane, and there's Rocky Mountain High. Yes, the yellow two are definitely the be- the best two. Yeah. Um. Not yeah. sure about the order of those two, but that's. I like Rocky Mountain High over the jet plane, but that that that's cool. Um, John Denver is a legend. So, you want to go with the easier one or a really tough one? Uh, give me a tough one. Uh, okay then, let's go Latin Quarter. Tough. It's also one of those okay bands. Tough. It's it's one of those higher tier bands, man. Good or great? Good. Like upper tier, like very upper tier good. Probably lower tier grade. Like mid tier good. I don't know. Uh, lower tier grade. I think they're. They, they they probably like considering all of it, uh they're they're up there. Top twenty band. Top twenty band for sure. What's the best song or favorite song? That is a That's a really good. tough one. I'm gonna they're say in, Dominion, but I'm not Okay. Sure. They're extremely consistent. Like they're extremely, extremely consistent with like there's really not a lot of bad stuff there. It's tough to rank it in general. Let's see what they got. You only have like six songs in there. Yes. Not even all that much. Burn Again, Korra, Dominion, Modern Times, The mm-hmm. Men Below, and The New Millionaires. That's true. I'm going to look at my playlist as well. Uh, Burn Again's uh, also really good. Burn Again's really good. So are you sticking with... Um, you you think you'd stick with Dominion if you'd have to? It, it just might be Burn Again, honestly. Okay. Oh, dude. I, actually, Burn Again was also not one that I thought of right away when I... Uh, Found the gym, was, man. I was thinking about... Snowblind. There's a... It's no Does bad. not ring a bell. I, I've probably heard it before, but uh, I've given it to you on a on a USB drive once because oh, it's on YouTube. Th- then I know exactly where in which folder yeah. they currently. Reside. We should listen to that too after uh, recording yes, the podcast. We it's can really do great. That. Um, that's one of the better ones, to be fair. But I like I also like Modern Times. But again, like they're all good. They, they the weakest one might be Cora. Is probably definitely Cora. But man, Latin Quarter is a really good band. I would I would compare Latin Quarter somewhat um, equally to the Blue Oyster Cult. Okay, I I think the Cult is better, but I I knew you would you was gonna. But to me, those are those are kind of uh, like on the same um, same tier with uh, quality and quantity. It's it's fairly similar, I think. What was the one, what was the easy one you were gonna say? Uh, well, I, I didn't have an easy one in oh, mind. you said, but, yeah, fair enough. Or you can go for an easy, we I mean, go for an easy, easy ones are kind of less interesting anyways. Yeah, that's this kind of the thing. Um, let's, let's scroll down the list a little bit, see what, if you can find something interesting. Metallica, I think we've talked before. We've talked about before. There's like three songs that are kind of on the same level. I mean, it's The Unforgiven would be number one, Anderson would be two. Uh, yeah, some some of that sort. Yeah. yeah. There's there's nothing. Mike Oldfield? Mike? Old Mike? Got Mike? What are you going with Mike? What do you say? It's also kind of tough. It's, mm-hmm. one, it's, it's one of those harder ones. Because, like, Mike did a lot of... Uh, How many songs did Mike Oldfield sing? <laughs> like, sing? Like, actually, he <laughs> himself, not that many. I know one. Yeah. I know uh, legitimately one. They Shadow on the Wall. Yeah. For, for. It's all right. Um, that's the it's, only one I know. It's still arguably one of the better ones as well. You think so? Yes. It's I'm not... I, I, it's okay. I'm not going to necessarily I, say it's I number didn't, one. I didn't necessarily consider it for one, though. I don't think it is number one. It's probably not number one, but the thing is, Mike did a lot. I'm not sure if it's just a nostalgia talking, but I want to say Two Friends. Two Friends is great, yeah. I did, that's probably what I would have said. Uh, I like um, 
uh, Innocent and um, Moonlight. Was it Moonlight Shadow? Yes, Moon Shadow's cat scenes. And exactly. Moonlight Shadow yeah, is Moonlight like Shadow. Old exactly. Those two, man. Those two are always confused. Those two, for real. Yeah, the song titles, yeah. That, ah, that's tough. Uh, this is a good folder. Let's have a look at uh, that. Boy. There's just... There, there's the Moonlight folder. Shadow pictures in the dark, Shadow on the Wall to France. Yeah. I might have more, but you also not do. by a great margin. What are you picking? Um, I mean, I, I'm sticking with two friends. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, I really just got uh, got innocent in there too, but that's either in the music share or on a folder on your computer. Yeah, I'm I'm somewhat behind with some of those. Uh, things. Yeah, give me two friends, two friends, man. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's enough? Did enough? Probably enough. I mean, I'm I can just quickly yeah. scroll through. We can also revisit that again obvious in, uh, ones. in a later podcast, but um, yeah. It's nothing that really jumps out of me. We don't right need now. to be pulled. Yeah, we can do that. We can revisit that. Except right. for the fact that there's a million beds in there whose name starts with the. Which makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, that's how bands work. So let's get into the uh, let's get into the halftime show, man. What do we got? Uh, what you want to ask me matter. questions about chess? Yeah, exactly. Because you're learning chess or starting to learn chess. So I got some questions for you. Uh, in part about just. Interesting things uh, surrounding the game and some knowledge questions that you might know that I think you should know. Some of them are a bit more challenging, or more specifically, one or two of them. So let's get into this. Uh, is one of some of the ones that is just like um, the first question in the exam? Have you been paying attention in class? The current world champion in chess. What nation is he from? Where is he from? America, right? No. No. He's Norwegian. Oh, was it Challenger or something? Yeah, the Challenger. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. Like another question down the line. Do you know his name? Remember his name? I don't remember any the names. The champion's ever. name? Magnus Carlsen. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that before. Yeah. That, so that's, that's one of those. That's a pretty cool name. That, name. Name a chess player that you know. You know a name of a, of a chess player in history. Of a chess player yeah, in history. A chess player in history. There is one guy for sure. Bobby Fischer. Uh huh. Yeah, we've mentioned him before. Yeah, also Gary Kasparov. You should also probably have heard. Of. Yes, but then again, I'm not that good at remembering yeah. Russian names because they're always complicated. Shit. <laughs> Gary? Gary? Well, it's Gary enough. tough. Is Gary tough? Gary is the easy part. Okay. Like the the come on, Russian names aren't a, aren't that hard. Maybe Russian they're, last names? They're really not. Not necessarily. There's like multiple syllables and they have like weird pronunciations and stuff. That's the same case for English names too, if you look at it. No, Russian names aren't tough. Um, <laughs> okay, the next question would be who is he playing in um, November and it is year for the World Championship? Yes, it's an American. I'm assuming you don't remember the name. No, I don't remember his name. Uh, it was. I'm glad that I remember my own name for Christ's sake. Last time I I told you the name, I had him. I had you estimate his nation. His name was Fabiano Caruana. Oh right. Yeah. And you said like, oh, he's a Spanish dude, like Portuguese, something like that. And no, uh, he's just uh, he's um like an uh, Italian American, born in Miami or something. We would look that up too. Name three different time controls. Three. What do you mean by time control? Uh, a time control is the um, basically the time that you play a game. So, for example, um, uh, a one-hour game. Then we the time control. Well, I mean, there is Blitz, which is like just f- just yeah. like re- this, those are really fast. Yeah, Blitz uh, is pretty fast. Blitz is something between like three minutes and ten minutes. Or yeah, usually. Um, I mean, I don't know what they call it. Standard one is like standard or classic or whatever, where they take like days. Yeah, not necessarily days, can't but take yeah, days. Can, that's, that's just classical, yeah. Uh, I, you've, on their website where we played, there was another one where it was like even faster than Blitz, but I don't yeah. remember what it was called. It's called Bullet. Fair enough. And a- everything in between, like Blitz and like, a, like, like over 10, 15 minutes going up to 30 minutes is called Rapid. Okay. And then stuff like an hour is typically just isn't played. So it's either the the quick games, the rapid and blitz stuff, or it's classical. That's usually that's usually the uh, directions that are being played. I mean, I guess for the people that are all about the quick thinking stuff, it's not fast enough to be playing for an hour. But for yeah, them, it's already exactly. too slow. And for the people who are who like to take their time, yeah. it's too fast. Yeah, I'm so a, there's I'm no a, yeah. person that's really interested in that exact exactly. time frame. Maybe. I'm a huge blitz player. I'm 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 a blitz player. Uh, but there's always preference. Some people just can't stand it at all. They only play classical. That's uh, fair enough. So, um, 
Where was chess invented? Chess, where it was invented. Yes. It's like an, it's like an ancient ass game. It's old, man. Thousands of years. I wonder if the pieces originally had the same name is because if they didn't quite, then it just might be like China or something. I'm gonna actually go for the Wikipedia article and read you the story if I can find okay. it. Okay. So, um... Because if it... If it actually... Originally the pieces were all the same names, then it would obviously be like a Western type thing because of kings specifically. So and you wanna, stuff. Uh, it's from India. Or it's India, fair So it's a Chinese I, thing? I, I thought it was something yeah. Asian, but yeah. Can you uh, estimate the time frame? Um, well, India, I mean, that again, it's, it's probably like ages ago. Yeah, it's been uh, almost 2,000 years. Like, somewhere yeah. between 280 and 550 is, is what they say here. Um, you uh, told the when story. When you say, oh, you said almost 2,000 yeah, years, right? right. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, because you told, otherwise you would have to specify yeah, yeah, sure, AD or sure, BC. Sure. Um, you've told the story about this dude with the, uh, with the rice grains, right? That's one of those stories. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, who apparently invented the chessboard, and then he... Told like showed it to his king. Was like, oh, this is how chess works. I didn't. I didn't remember why he asked it. I just remember that he asked for like mm-hmm. one rice grain on the first thing, yeah, and then exactly like uh, two on the second, and yep. then doubling up for every one, and then it ends up being like thirty-two quintillion or something. Exactly. And the monarch was so like into the thing that he is like, oh yeah, what what do you want? Whatever you want. And it's like put one rice grain on the first square and double it with every square that you go along, and it ends up being in the same amount of rice grains. I did, I did the math. It, it, it's 2 to the 65 minus 1, obviously. Yeah. And um, that's that should be around 32 quintillion. But that's that's a, grains of rice. But that's just me estimating uh, 2 to the 10 equals uh, 10 to the 3, which is means that 1,024 is 1,000, which is... I don't think I could eat that in one sitting. Yeah, no. I don't think I could eat that in a lifetime, probably. That's, probably that's not. That's crazy. Um, okay. Assuming you've played just just played a, a game and you're going to the end game, uh, and we just have two rooks versus a queen on the board, which side is better? Which side is for choice? What would you choose? What two rooks or a queen? Yeah, two rooks or a queen. I'm gonna assume the two rooks because of value. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Because you got you c- can do more with two pieces than mm-hmm. with one. And you could also have the pieces yeah. protect each other so that the Correct. queen itself doesn't become a big threat. But if I ask you two, two um, knights versus a queen. Two bishops. Yeah. Knight and bishop. Uh, Rook and bishop. Okay, the queen can move to squares more easily than uh, yeah. the knights or the bishops can, so that's fair. So uh, you could have approached this from like, the value system where a rook is five, a queen is nine. You know, and you were knight asking about a specific game situation and you said before that yeah. The value system, it doesn't always hold up in all game situations, necessarily. Um, yeah, but that's only very specific situations where it is a reasonable outcome in terms of, like, mate, or you're winning back matter- okay. material later, uh, forcibly. Typically, it does. Um, two rooks is for choice against a queen, even though it takes a little bit more skill to play. Like, because you need to be coordinating it correctly. But yeah, it's technically correct. Uh, can you name a, like, a vague strategy for the opening? First few things that you want to uh, accomplish in the opening. I mean, I would assume you would want to get uh, your pieces out there, like, get mm-hmm. a bit extra mobility, like, uh, move the pawn that's in front of the bishop so you can move them out. The, I mean, the knights can move out on their own, and yeah. unless you actively block them with your pawns, which doesn't seem like a good idea. Mm, that's not a good idea. That's, that's right. And I guess you could try, you know, getting all that stuff out there and then maybe castling or something, but I mean, that's also yeah. a specific thing. That's just pretty correct. One, one uh, key word that you... My one to also remember is the center. Like get like uh, gain dominance in the center, establish the center. Okay. Because that's 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 uh, kind of important. So the uh, mm-hmm. typically the E and D pawns are in uh, in most in the vast majority of games the first pawns being moved. Okay, it, it makes sense to go for the center because mm-hmm. once you got the center, you got more accessibility to everything else on the board. Correct. And uh, then it's basically correct. Yeah, develop your minor pieces, get your bishops and knights out, castle. And then uh, develop the uh, the the bigger pieces later. So that's that's actually a pretty all right. All right. Uh, how many queens can a player have at one time? I mean, I would say nine. That is right. Because, because you can uh, up, you can uh, what, what is it called? Upgrade? No, what Pro- do they call promote. It? Promote uh, eight pawns to queens. Mm-hmm, that's correct. And you can still have your original queen on top of that. Mm-hmm. Technically, that's correct. Even though in practice, that will be kind of 
just Wait. logistically tough. Yeah, though. because it never you, happens. Of course, you have to get all of the opponent's pawns and shit out of the way to yeah. actually get all of your pawns exactly. to the end. It never happens, of course, and it, even like, logistically it would be tough to arrange because having nine queens on the board without or getting to nine without the opponent's king being either mated or stalemated is not even that easy. Okay, now I have a question. Has anyone ever figured out that's at all possible to have nine queens? Uh, it's definitely possible. Because there just needs, you need to have nine queens with a square, with there being squares that aren't covered. Like that are, that, that aren't being covered. And you have to get all of your pawns to the other end. Even if your opponent's helping you, there's still pieces that you need well, to Well, yeah, it's definitely possible. You could just clean up the entire, if your opponent were playing along, you could just clean up their entire, um, their entire basically uh, that has peace collection with a knight if you wanted to oh yeah and just hop out and just snap everything right because you can get to every square yeah if they helped you that's absolutely possible but to and not mate or stomach it's it, of course it never happens but it's and then you have to theory. somehow protect their king mm-hmm. so yeah, that it's your tough. millions of queens or nine more accurately yeah. are yeah uh, here's a fact and you can tell me if that's true or false a pawn can only ever capture Something that is diagonal from him. So one square diagonal from off of him. To the front. Isn't there a specific situation where he can move like almost like a knight and then take the piece behind it or something? Wasn't it something? Uh, that's exactly what I was getting at. Um, it's called an en which is um, right French for in passing. And um, it basically means that uh, it's a certain situation uh, when a pawn... The opposing pawn just moved two squares. Like, did his first move? move yes. Squares, and then now it's uh, right next to your pawn. Then you can take it. But move like you would actually normally take it. Like, it moved one move. Yes. And only for that one move. It moves the same way as if there was a piece there. But you can take the pawn as it's passed. So it's kind of like... You can look at it uh, as like a, a term that you might understand. Like a counterattack in the Dungeons and Dragons. Like a reaction type of thing. Yes. Because it moves past you so you get that, that chance to... Snap into yes. a cast room. So that's uh that's actually what I was getting. I didn't know that you knew that. That was the kind of trick question there. Uh, I I couldn't have told you how to exactly pull it off, mm-hmm. but I've heard that there was something you could do there. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. So uh, you're gonna learn more about that stuff too. Um let's get into the fact of the week. Uh let us get into the fact of the week. I have it written down. Would I... you like to share your fact? Oh no, I won't. No, I'm gonna keep yes. that for myself. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the point. Uh, here's something interesting that happened actually to us recently. Um, so I brought I brought some coke, right, to an event. Oh no, you brought Coca Cola. You brought a beverage. Jesus Christ, don't swat us. It would have become clear from the context. Just, Jesus Christ, just, just got to be sure. I right, you brought. I, I brought some coke. Okay? Beverage. And damn, sir. So I was, I was like. Uh, do you want a Coke? And you were like, yeah, like, just give me one, like, the Coke Light ones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because you always drink, like, Coke Light or Coke Zero. That's and then we actually looked at the labels. Because oh, yeah, I had prepared. both Coke Light and Coke Zero for yeah, some right, reason. Right. And it turns out that Coke Light has, like, 0.1 calorie less or something. Mm-hmm. It has, like, slightly less calories than the Coke Zero. Yeah. Uh, which I can only imagine, that's my theory, was because of how they are restricted. So I think... Uh, zero means it has to be zero sugar, so there cannot be any sugar in there. And light is, means something that is like uh needs to be less than a certain amount of calories, because if it's were if it were both restricted over sugar, it wouldn't work, because zero would of course be more restrictive than just light. Anyways, it seemed counterintuitive on first sight, and I just mm-hmm. thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. So you know, that's there might be like week. slight. Uh, whatever so slight amounts of sugar and light. That's I, quite possible. I mean, that was also just... It was a minuscule difference. Yeah, it's, essentially, like, it's essentially still the same thing. It's, it's like a difference of like 12.5%. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. Still the same thing. Um, especially like 12.5 already sounds a lot. When you're looking at the sm- the the, the uh, size of the dimension, it's like, it's a lot. I'm saying like one, one was like 0.8 and one was 0.9. Yeah. It's like nothing. Here's another fact of the week. Um... A study in like 1987 or whatever found that um, that cats, when they fall out of a of a window from um, seven stories or higher, uh, had a f- about five 
five percent fatality rate, while below that, between like five and seven stories high, uh, they actually die twice as often at like ten percent. Yeah, for the before I found that that online, I was like, okay, like because I would like to think back on how did that happen, like. How did I conduct that study? Were they just like... Well, they dropped chuck- cats out of windows, right? Were they right? Like chucking cats out of windows the whole time? Or was were they just, uh, c- like, collecting uh, information from, from like, accidents? I, I would assume the latter. Probably. Like, I don't think they're... Because they said the study included, like, over 100 cats. So I don't think they're just standing in, like, oh, and like a <laughs> big-ass skyscraper. Like, like, buying 100 cats, standing at different levels, just throwing them on the window. Just chucking cats and see if they survive? <laughs> Damn. But yeah, that's an interesting fact. So um, I've heard of that before. I never, really? I, I never heard of any like concrete studies. But I've heard people mm-hmm. call it like, "Oh yeah, if a cat were gonna fall out of the fourth story, it wouldn't. It would more like it would be harder for it than if it fell from higher because it has more mm-hmm. time to land on its feet or some bullshit." Yeah, possible. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the actual reasoning, but I've sure. heard it being said before. Okay. Yeah, that's. I might, that's, have, I might have even mentioned it before. I'm not that sure. That is definitely a weird thing, though. But I've never. I never knew that there was any like statistical data backing it up. I would never throw a cat out the window, by the way. But I'm pretty sure they do that on their own. I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't touch it because I'm allergic to it. Yes, but I'm pretty sure I would, cats I would, I would, jump would, out of windows on their own. I, yeah, I'd probably poke it out the window with like a ten foot rod. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, I'm not touching no cat. Classic man. ten foot pole. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Touch, I'm not touching no cats, man. I'm allergic to these bastards. What do we got, man? What do we got coming up? Oh god, what do we have? My god, I look my at the notepad so bad. real Yeah, thing. let's look at my notes. Oh yeah, you want to talk about? Uh, we I suggested it, but you talked about exactly it before. We mentioned it last week on the side of it. Um, the character building block. exercises ba- primarily based on doing certain tasks Correct. on a regular basis, basically just for the sake of doing them. Exactly. That's um. Based on what I like to cite a lot is the the um, poem "The Man in the Glass." Yes, or Guy Which in the is Glass your favorite poem? by Dale Wimbrow, uh, recited by um, Bill Parcells a lot. Of that, if anyone uh, that rings a bell for anyone, probably not for you. Nope, football coach. Um, he, he used to tell that story a lot, and it's um, like in in like document documentaries about, and that's always um, like always plays an important role. The idea is basically that. You're your own judge and jury in your life, right? And uh, it's foolish to think of something in a way that you need to do something for someone else or to uh, gain validation from someone else. Because the what the what it comes down to the conclusion is that um, you can't like you're the only person that you can't fool, right? Because you know what you're doing. If you're if you're playing, if you're cheating, you're lying. You know it. Like, the man in the glass knows it. We're talking about mirrors here, right? <laughs> yes. So, the man in the glass always knows it, and you can't lie to the man in the glass. So, if you're trying to improve something and uh, work on self-improvement, then that's always where you need to be starting. You don't need to be starting at uh, making better impressions on other people, even though that's, that's of course, important. It's going to help you down the road. Um, that... Uh, that inner thing is is more important because and what I what I've um, basically tried to get across with that is like these small exercises, right? Uh, saying that you're gonna do something and sticking to it, and the the great thing about this is that no one else needs to be involved. Um, for example, something that you said you were wanted to do was something like uh for one week, uh every day of the week, pick out a different new song. Fun fact: that idea is totally stolen from Rick and Morty. Is it? I literally mentioned that last when we talked about it the first time. Is that a fact? Uh, Rest and relax- relaxation when uh, Morty. Oh yeah. It's like hits like random. And it's like uh, and he's like I have never heard this song. He's like yeah, I just hit random. We should do that more often. And that's how okay. I came up with that idea in the first yeah. place. So when when he said that, like uh, that was almost a week ago that you said that. Yes. Would you uh, elaborate on how that went for you? Well, the first thing I completely forgot because I was out all day, and then and since then, but since then I've done it every single okay. day, and um, consciously done it too. Yeah, of course. Okay. And uh, I mean, it exposes you to more music in that specific case, yeah. which of course is something that I like because in that way it has a positive effect because I yeah. extend my playlist of. I'm not sure if it's done anything to form character, but I, I do it for three more days. Yeah. And after that, like, the only thing that you need to, at the end, have accomplished from that is 
Uh, I said that I wanted to do something and I did it. Yeah. That's all you need to do because that's all, that's what everything that you do in life eventually boils down to. Doesn't mean, doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to achieve anything. And that's what, uh, I'm trying to say with this, uh, topic is that, uh, when you start off like that, it doesn't matter what exactly you're doing. You don't need to be, you don't need to be thinking about, uh, I'm going to the gym every day now. And of course, that's great. If you want to do that, that's great. But if you're, if just starting getting to the habit of not fooling yourself. Also, only if you know what you're doing, don't do full body workouts sure, every day. Sure. That, that, oh, oh, there's an expert speaking yet, yeah, but it's true though. Of uh, course it's yeah, true. Don't target the same, uh, groups of muscle without at least like 48 to 72 hours of rest. That's, uh, that's a fact, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, small tasks. It's all about learning not to, not to play yourself. I think you mentioned um, when we had this conversation before about that topic. Uh, some student at some college who uh, was yes. reading a book a week, I believe you said. Yes, that was a, a, a YouTuber that I saw. Uh, he had the he set himself the challenge of reading a book per week in like a year. He, he um, his New Year's resolution was I'm going to read a book a week, and then uh, he reported about that uh, on YouTube every once in a while, talking about you know in the beginning it's kind of tough. But once you start starting, which is what it all comes down to, you need to start starting, you just need to get started, uh, it becomes easier. The hard thing is just to continue doing it every single day, and or every week f- for that matter. But he says, and then he had this helped him a lot. And for him, this was already about, like, actually the, the things that he does helping him, right? Like, the, the habit that he develops is, is uh, preferable or pr- profitable because... Uh, he'll learn a lot of things from those books, right? Yeah. And that's, of course, where you can develop this into. But the um, the most important thing like, is just the getting into the habit of building habits. It's kind of a meta thing. Um, but the the thing to recognize there is, like, you can do... It, it can be whatever it, it should be. Like, if you uh, know that you're always kind of fooling yourself... You're not really doing what you set out to do. Start, like, as small as you want to. You can literally say anything. The, the only thing you need to be working on is the consistency. So, like, the one song a week is perfectly fine. Uh, I'm going to pick or go to YouTube five minutes every day, pick out a new song. Like, that I might like. Or just even just listen to a new song that I haven't listened to. Doesn't, did you, like, um, look until you found one that you liked? No. It, or just listen to one? I primarily... Uh, did it like oh yeah like let's look at a band that I know that yeah. has songs that I like and let's see what else they've done yeah. I've listened to a few songs usually multiple ones because I had the time but the ideas of course right. just yeah. the one is necessary technically that's all that's all that this and is. then um, you know turns out the Kaiser Chiefs really aren't that great besides mm. Ruby and I Pretty Riot other bands are better than that, you know, you find new songs, sometimes you might listen to one band, then there's like a, a sp- so- other song that sounds interesting in the suggestions, you click it, you know. So you're actually already gaining information from that that's useful to you. Yeah. Plus you're doing the thing. So, uh, what, three days from now you'll be done? Seven we- days in a row? Is that correct? Um, well... You skipped it, the first one, it, so it you, before, yeah. you probably started on like a Sunday? Uh... Wait, yeah, you should have started. Because we had the discussion on a Friday. Uh, Saturday, we went to a barbecue, so you didn't do it then, because we was there all night. And then you started it on a Sunday. That doesn't sound right. That does sound absolutely correct. Sounds very right. Does it not sound right? Was it, uh, was it on a Monday, and then a, and then you started it on a Thursday? A Tuesday? That sounds more like it. Okay, so, you, so you're going up until next Tuesday. Something like that. Okay, so just keep going with that. And uh, the basic idea is just you do that up until that that, that Tuesday or whatever, and then uh, look, look at the man in glass. You know what? I just did something. I said I was going to do it, and I did it. And if you forget it, or you just like over the... I'm staying over the weekend at your place if you didn't know that already. Yes. So if you right. forget it by any chance do that, then you start again. That's all that it is. It, because... It's not that it's not hard to do or anything, right? It's no. just the consistency. Is that five minutes of discipline per day? Um, if you're gonna be sitting here at some point, like a few hours from now, and be telling me, you know what? Shut up for ten minutes. I'm doing my daily song. That's fair, because uh, that's really what I need to teach yourself, right? Sticking to that and and having that consistency in there. So 
Uh, after you've done that, you got any idea of what you're going to do as well? Because I thought you could be one of those uh, read a book type of things as well. Type of guys. Yeah, I mean, we uh, also kind of mentioned this. I uh, not on the podcast, but we talked about that before. Um, I was thinking about maybe. I generally also talked about the podcast before about how I haven't read a lot lately. Yeah. So I was thinking about maybe like a book a month or something. I'm probably mm. not going to go for the weekly book because yeah, it is it's a, a lot. lot especially if you have a week where there's a lot of other stuff to yeah. do, you might literally not be have the time to yeah. just. Sit down for a few hours and read a book, but... Um, no, this is okay. Uh, do you want to uh, read them, or, like, is an audiobook acceptable, or both, or what are you going to do? Well, I mean, for me, just based on the type of person that I am, I would much rather read it, actually. Okay. Because, th- to me, that's preferable. Yeah, okay. That, like, that's I understand fair. how the audiobook is practical as, like, yeah. a thing you can do on the side. Yeah, I like that better, but that's that's just but personal preference. If I'm consuming a book, I want to kind of focus on that. Consuming your book sounds disgusting. <laughs> I don't care. I know what you're saying. Yeah, because I I, I didn't yeah, want to yeah. say reading because yeah, sure. uh, you were listening to books. Yeah. So I want to be focused on that. At which point, if I'm listening to it, I'm probably doing it on my computer. There's stuff open. Mm-hmm. It's you are more likely to get distracted yeah, that, than correct. if you're actually putting a book in your hand. Maybe putting on some music yeah. in the background, and then you're okay. just reading for a few hours. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Um, that's of course like a a lo- more long term project. Yeah. But you can also keep going with the smaller ones, just to like reinforce that type of stuff, right? Like uh, maybe have the weekly thing going, and then after you accomplish a full week, you're like, you know what? Uh, I just did another one. These are easy. Like essentially, if you you know there's a bigger picture, these are easy, and that might give you more motivation to get into that book for that month, if you haven't maybe into like two weeks into the month or something like that. Yes. And uh, whenever you don't do it, you forget it, you fail, you just start again. And the good thing about it is, you, is that you're never going to have to justify this to anyone else. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about doing this for not daily stuff, but for like weekly or monthly, mm-hmm. is that I feel like it's way harder to forget it. Yeah. Because if you're, tr- if you're actually trying to do it, then you might not do it on the last possible day, even if exactly. you're a horrible procrastinator like I am. You might actually be like, oh yeah, you know, new month started, you know, like, yeah. pick out a book, read it on the weekend. Exactly. And then, if you forget it, there's still, like, three more weekends in the, in the month. Yeah. So, you know, here's my challenge, man. Um, we got, um, we got, we got September, right? Yes. So, uh, what you're gonna do is just read a book every month for the rest of this year. Okay. That's four books. I you don't go- think the way this is supposed to work is that you challenge me, but whatever, it works. Okay, but yeah, I'm sure yeah, I, it I, isn't. I mean, we get we yeah. came up with that based on stuff. You can do however many of those you like, and you also don't need to justify this to me at all. Um, if you don't, then just do it again. Uh, that's what I was about to say. That's a great thing. You don't need to justify to anyone. Which you means always that, said that. Yeah. yeah, which means that you don't, there's no need in covering up failure. Because uh, if, of course, someone else just, like... Challenges you to you working for someone whatever then you'll like um you you fail at it you're like shit I need to um I need to like uh, fool him right I need to tell him I did it or like pretend I did it or something that that doesn't even that doesn't happen it doesn't make sense to do that well either pretend you did it or I'm, f- make up yeah. excuses in for this what you did. in this specific case right yeah it it doesn't matter in this specific case because of the man in the glass a man in the glass don't give a shit the man in the glass knows you just forgot. Or you would just were too lazy. So that's that's the full concept. And also it, being too lazy should never be an excuse. Yeah, exactly. So it isn't. So you can't make an excuse to yourself. Mm. The um the thing is also you could just if the, the forgetting is a legit problem, just write it down. Yeah. Write yourself a notification like, it up to wall. I'm I'm legitimately a very forgetful person. That is true, I know that. And that actually has been a problem in the past. Could you, by yourself, go to the exact destination that we had a barbecue yesterday? Yes, I did, as a matter yeah, of fact, yes, yesterday. That is correct, you did. Oh, I remember <laughs> you did. <laughs> but the first time you didn't. No, Second but the time. first time we also didn't know where it was. That is true. That's it's the re- That's like one of those fact. somewhat <laughs> simple to get to places. That's a fact. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Also, you, because I've literally been in the same street before, yeah. except for that very last one. Yeah, that's true. I just know, I kind of know the area. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's fair, that's a fact. All right, um, want to end it? Uh, just so last host. segment? Yeah, sure. Uh, gotta leave the people on a high note. And a bad musical pun. What's the song of the week? My song of the week is one that I've 
that's one of those that I've kind of known for a while, but never consciously heard a lot lately until I did. All right. Um, it's actually one that you added to your playlist. When? Uh, I all of the songs that I have, I at one point added to my playlist. Like a few weeks ago, probably. Oh, okay. Is when I first remember hearing it in your playlist. I was like, "Why do I not have that song?" Oh, I know it. I got you it. You probably know it. Yeah. Got it's it. uh, the Ballroom Blitz by yeah. Sweet. That's actually been a bit long in there, a bit longer. Has it? Wow. Oh yeah, it's been in there for uh, I want to say about half a year in my playlist. I. I swear to God, I only remember hearing First it. First time you pointed it out, you were like, wow, I almost didn't recognize this particular version of that song. And then, uh, like, wow. It seems unusual because I don't think there was really that many versions of yeah. that song. You're like, wow, I didn't, almost didn't recognize that at all. And uh, now, lately, we've been listening to it more, in part because of social gatherings that have been... Um, yeah, we also didn't do a lot of, like, social gatherings yeah. in the last half year. And then also started more recently again. But yeah, um... Because we got done with finals, so... That song... and time on our hands. And then... I, uh... You know, I heard it a few times at the bar, because I was like, I got it. I got it. Gotta get it. You know, go out there. Just get it. Get it. Just do it. Tell the man of glass, you're gonna download that song. And then, you and know... And then you did it. Did you do it? I haven't downloaded it, but I added it to my... Okay. To the YouTube playlist that I always yeah. add songs to, and then download from once I have... Yeah. Like, 20 or 30 songs added okay. there, because... I'm. It did it though. I, I prefer Bob Dylan. So yeah, I, I like one time after. I'm not sure if it was right after barbecue or like the next morning. Mm-hmm. I just went out there like I'm the gonna, Baldwin Blitz. I'm gonna do this. Click the thing, like oh yeah, sweet. That's the correct version. Good. How oh, so oh, sweet? Yeah. That's what you're thinking. Oh, that's sweet. I, I was referring to the <laughs> name of the band. I know, but uh, puns do enable themselves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So that's the song of the week. Uh, good stuff. I got another song of the week. Well, my song of the week. Uh, which is um, a classic, man. It's Waltzing Matilda by uh, all 20,000 people who've ever done that. No, I'm just kidding. It's specifically the Queensland version by The Seekers. I like it better than the classical version. I just do. And it's generally my favorite uh, artist for that song in general. And uh, that's my favorite version, favorite artist. So there you go. Song of the Week. Uh, legendary one and my particular, very particular favorite, favorite version. You cool with that? Sure. All right. So um, thank you for listening to the podcast. We're going to speak to you again next week, but there's a lot of other stuff we do during the week. We play a lot of Hearthstone, other games. So be sure to check those out. Maybe subscribe to the channel so you get notified about it. Hit that bell. And um, until then, JJ. That's it. That's it.